Hey there, my name is AJ Pickett and I make videos about role playing games and lots of them. I upload twice a week with a live stream every weekend. You can also find me on Subscribestar, Patreon and Discord, Facebook and Twitter. Also there's an option to join the channel as a member and I welcome any questions you have in the comments section down below. If you like this video or this channel, I welcome you to subscribe to this channel and its very friendly community. It's back to wild space and beyond today with exploration of the insectoid species called the Zixchil. Similar in some basic ways to the fearsome thrycreen of the world of Athos, the Zixchil are medium-sized intelligent carnivorous mantoids, which is to say insectoids with quite a strong resemblance to giant praying mantis predators, and more than a passing resemblance to the formidable thrycreen of the world of Athos. They are able to be used as a player character race, so we'll be talking about that in this video, as well as their most famous and amazing abilities, which some might consider a little difficult to integrate into the game, so I'm here to help out with that as well. Zixchil evolved somewhere out in the prime material plane, within a crystal sphere which was home to a world which is called a live world in Spelljammer parlance. In the Warhammer 40k RPG they would call it a death world, covered by worldwide jungles that harbour vicious carnivorous plants and animals but also rich in natural mineral deposits. The Zixchil was just one of countless large cunning insectoids subjected to constant dangers. As a result, they are highly intelligent, very, very adaptable and extremely quick to discover, investigate and take full advantage of any opportunity that they can lay their pincers on. Shaped by an extreme environment, the Zixchil are born survivors who accept that survival of the fittest is just the nature of reality. They don't burden themselves with the ethics of that harsh reality. Females spin egg cases which contain 10d10 fertile eggs that hatch quickly, most of their development having occurred while gestating in the mother, which means it's quite possible to open the egg case early and extract all the eggs prior to hatching. I only mention this because sometimes superior numbers are more vital than superior individuals. On hatching, you see, the baby Zitchil are already able to kill, and they will attack the other infants until only one or two of them remain, and within a week, their homicidal drive will fade making them docile enough to work together to and achieve their civilization. They're not too docile though. Over eons they've evolved to modify not only their environment, but also their own bodies in order to outgun all competition on their planet. If you drop a Zixchil into a desert environment full of armor-plated desert scorpions, in a very short time the Zixchil will have grown sand coloration, adhered sand and rock to their carapace to blend in perfectly and adapted their weapon limbs to punch right through a scorpion armor and inject lethal toxins into them. This adaptation is universal, so they are just as capable of adapting to new civilizations, swiftly adopting local mannerisms and habits, blending in with the population, establishing an economic advantage and eventually becoming a formidable facet of that culture, mainly thanks to their extreme skill in the art of body modification and surgery on not just themselves, but all manner of different life forms. The Zixchil believe that the body is like a house and that one must add to the blank shell to make it truly one's home. Because of this belief, Zixchil are very easy to tell apart. Their exoskeletons can be covered with inlays, gem settings, and other adornments, and they may have be grown into fantastic shapes. Zixchil can synthesize individually tailored anesthetic poisons that render a patient unconscious for several hours. The process is simple enough. Once the Zixchil has touched the victim, it licks its finger blade to taste the victim's essence and then internally synthesizes a tailored poison. On the next round, the Zixchil bites to administer this poison saliva. Generally, the poison reacts with the victim's body chemistry, paralyzing or killing the victim in one round. Those bitten save versus poison at disadvantage due to the tailored brew. The Zixchil may also spit the poison onto its finger blades. The saliva must be used within the next few hours before it breaks down and becomes useless. As you can imagine, not only is this very handy for medical treatments, it's also very effective at killing other creatures quickly and quietly, which makes the Zixchil natural born assassins. If they decide to pursue that line of work, they do very well at it and demand a very high price, particularly when tasked with delivering a target incapacitated but still alive for their clients who want to deliver the execution personally. Despite having insectoid mouth parts, including rigid mandibles, Zixchil can emulate humanoid speech by way of rasping and clicking, which makes for an interesting accent. Their own language is a complex system of both gestures and spoken words punctuated by sharp clicks and pops. Zixchil may surgically modify any part of their body, of course, and it's common for them to adapt their mouth parts to better emulate humanoid language, even to the point of having beautiful singing voices. But most just do it so that they have an individual inflection to their voice. 
individuality is very central to Zixchul. They are easy to tell apart thanks to their surgical adaptations, and while their true names are usually very difficult for humanoids to say, as is the rest of their language, the common custom is for them to be known by a single defining physical characteristic such as blade, spinner, hook, crest, scarlet, or spike. Zixchul have natural retractable blades in their forelimbs that they can use both in combat and for their fine surgical work and their amazing feats of artifice. Clockwork mechanisms, robotics, detailed and decorative metalwork, gemstone inlays, they are just as capable of rewiring a body as they are any other vehicle and thus they can always find wealth through their reputation for medical prowess or craftsmanship of wondrous items. They are excellent shipboard doctors and engineers that can usually find a place on a Spelljammer crew and thus can be found nearly anywhere in the multiverse. Since they discovered spell jamming, Zitschil have realised that there are an endless variety of places of beings and things all useful for attaining greater personal prestige and security. Ironically, this desire to experience the new has caused some individuals to realise that there is more to life than mere self-preservation. Those with a real passion for exploration and new experiences often take up the lifestyle of the adventurer and make excellent player characters. Speaking of which, most of the legwork of creating a 5th edition version of the Zixchil has already been done with the Thrykreen, which have been in the pages of the Core Monster Manual all along. However, there are a few significant differences that set the Zixchil apart from them, and we still don't have an official 5th edition playable version of them yet, but there are lots of great homebrew examples on D&D Beyond, which we can draw on, and also something I found that I'll link below. So, bare basics. The Zixchil is a medium-sized insectoid race with three bonus attribute points to put in whichever stat they like, as long as one of them includes dexterity. As playable characters, they can be of any alignment, and they have a base walking speed of 35 feet per round. They have a natural armor in the form of an exoskeleton that provides an armor class equal to 13 plus their dexterity modifier. The exoskeleton has a remarkable ability to adapt to their surroundings so that a Zixchil can change the color of its carapace to match the color and texture of its surroundings. As a result, it has advantage on dexterity stealth checks made to hide, with a further bonus, skill bonus of plus four to stealth. Also, they have plus three to medicine and plus three to arcana thanks to their surgical and engineering talent. The Zixchil have a longer lifespan than the Thrykreen, but shorter than that of a human. They mature a lot faster though, reaching adulthood by the age of 5 or 6, so it kind of evens out. They are not able to perform the incredible leaps that the Thrykreen can, but they have the same 60 foot dark vision and poisonous bite, which uses their dexterity bonus, inflicts 1d6 piercing damage and the victim must make a DC 11 saving throw or become poisoned for 1 minute. If the target fails its saving throw by 5 points or more, they also become paralysed for the minute long duration. However, victims do get to make another saving throw at the start of each of their turns during that minute. But a successful saving throw doesn't render them immune to future poison effects from the Zixchil because the toxin is tailor-made just for them. It's pernicious. Now, I'm not saying this is official, but if I am DMing a game and the player has one of these characters and they want to craft a narcotic of some kind, I say show me the constitution role and let's get funky. If there was ever a species better suited to the mad scientist artificer, I don't recall encountering them. The Zixchil who dedicate their life to combat are walking arsenals of personal lethal adornment and body modification. They adapt their limbs to incorporate weapons such as maces and blowguns, net launchers, spinning saw blades, retractable swords, and they can also rivet on actuator stumps, basically clockwork motors bolted to their exoskeleton that they can attach specialist artificial limbs to. Think of the cannon mounted on the shoulder of the Predator alien. It's basically like that, but a hell of a lot more versatile. They are walking Swiss army knives and utility toolkits. Most Sixtual encountered out in wild space over the Flogerton flows will be adapted to the dangers of space travel, implanting special CO2 scrubbing organs that allow them to hold their breath for a quarter of an hour and operate for long periods of time in what is technically foul air that would kill a human. Many enhance their sensory organs and also all of them decorate themselves with exoskeletal etchings, inlays and ink stains in assimilation to tattoos and body piercings. They also have no issues with using magic, particularly healing magics, to allow easier recovery from surgical sessions. I'll include a link to a great homebrewery document based on the original Complete Spacefarer's Handbook, an article from Dragon Magazine number 266, and the various entries of the Monstrous Compendium Spelljammer Appendixes number 1 and 2, uh, among other things. 
The document is credited to Jenny L and has loads of inspirational content in there to sink your teeth into and add to your growing Spelljammer DMs binder. This is not just the Zixchill, there's a lot of races in that document that you can use. Remember, the upper larger arms of the unmodified Zixchill are just like those of a praying mantis. They are wicked looking blade limbs, perfect for grappling prey. They tuck these up close to their thorax when not in use and perform all their fine man manipulations with the lower set of upper limbs which have a variety of little digits, spikes and retractable blades which serve the same purpose humans have for fingers and utensils. They walk in a rare set of limbs with a bipedal stance with an abdomen which extends out behind them much more than the thrycrine does. Their exoskeleton is a bit more arched in the back and they don't have this any sort of wings or wing casing unless they artificially implant such features. Zixchil who dedicate their lives to body modification performed on other creatures as well as just general medical surgery will automatically know the spare the dying cantrip. It's not a game breaking sort of ability all things considered. Fairly common magic known throughout the multiverse. If you want inspiration for what their language sounds like, what sort of hive dwellings they might build and so on, you don't need to look any further than the Geonosians from Star Wars. Even the larger role that species had in the manufacture of droid armies and construction of a Death Star space fortress is right up the alley of the Zixchil, who would most likely do that sort of stuff if the money was right. In fact, if you have wealth and resources to trade, this is one of the better species to deal with in the D&D multiverse. Just as long as you always remember that their loyalty typically has a price tag and you may be outbid any time by someone with deeper pockets than yours. There are other insectoid races active across multiple worlds of the Prime Material Plane, including another Spelljammer race called the Rastipedes, which I'm happy to make a video about if you want me to. As always, I love to take requests from viewers for video subjects, just let me know down below. Please hit the like button if you made it this far, subscribe if you like what I do, check out my Subscribestar or Patreon, links for all the full scripts for these videos as well as closed captions on this video, uh, just activate it. Buy some Teespring merchandise, wear your geek with pride. And as always, thanks for listening and I'll be back with more for you very soon.